Hi, my name is Dale Jurgens, the owner and operator of DLMR Trailer Sales. And what we want to start doing for you is segments on trailer safety, trailer maintenance, uh, how to buy a trailer, how to winterize a trailer, a lot of different things. We have a lot of customers that come into our shop and they ask us a lot of questions because they're not really familiar with a lot of things about a trailer. So what we want to do throughout the summer and the beginning of this year is put little segments on so you, the owner of a horse trailer or someone who's going to acquire a horse trailer, has some idea of what to look for, how to you know take care of their own trailer, and unfortunately if you're out on the road and you have some issues, you're not stranded and you have some ideas on how to go ahead and repair your trailer, get it back on the road and keep it in a well-maintained use. Uh, what we'd also like you to do is if you do have some comments or ideas of what you're looking for, don't hesitate to give us an email or even pick up the phone and say, hey, can you, you know, do a little segment on what truck should I use or anything that you can think of. And we'll be more than happy to make a, a video and get it on YouTube to help you in whatever your needs may be. Okay, what we're going to do for you today is we're going to show you what we feel is the right way to inspect a trailer at the time that you're going to look at purchasing a used trailer. So what we're going to do is we're going to walk you around a way that you can do a, a, a brief inspection on a trailer to make sure that you're getting the trailer that you desire and a safe trailer. So this segment is going to show you how to inspect a trailer at someone's house or even at a dealership. What I've got here today is a Jackson. It's an older used trailer that we actually took in on consignment for a customer. And let's say this is a trailer that you're going to actually go look at that person's house and you're thinking about buying the trailer. The first thing you need to know is are the lights working, do the brakes work, uh, what does the ball coupler look like, and what are the components that uh, attach to your vehicle, or what condition and the functioning condition they are. Uh, I highly recommend you don't take somebody's word that it works. Uh, so basically what you need to do is hook up your truck and use your pickup as a test vehicle. I know when anybody goes out to buy a used car or a new car even, they always take it out for a test ride. So you should not be afraid to ask the person you're purchasing your trailer from that, hey, I would like to hook up my truck or his truck to the trailer and verify that all these components are functioning at the time of purchase. Uh, if the gentleman says, hey, yeah, I have no problem letting you hook it up, that's a good thing. If they're kind of hesitant to let you hook it up, I'd be a little bit leery why, why you wouldn't be able to hook it up. So the first thing I would ask after you visually look at the trailer and say, yeah, it looks like something you might be interested in, then ask them to go ahead and hook up the truck. And then what you would do is once you've hooked up the truck, and you've got the electrical plugs in, you would check the appropriate lights. Do the running lights work? Do the brake lights work? Do the turn signals work? And if those components all work, or if you have one bulb out that's a running light bulb, it could be a bad bulb, but most likely it's going to be a bad ground that you'd probably see in my segment of trailer repair or maintenance. So uh, if those, most of those functions are working, you know you've got a halfway decent electrical system as far as lighting goes. But the next thing you want to know is, do my brakes work? And if you're an experienced trailer and have used trailers prior to before, you do know you have a brake box in your truck. So what I'd recommend is, is get into the truck and apply the brakes on the horse trailer to see if the trailer's brakes are locking up. And it's simply done by starting the truck up, put it in drive, Apply your brake box, lever, and release your pedal. Now I do hear the brakes working, but I'm going to turn it up to maximum, and I'm going to let off the brakes, and the truck is stopped. So now it tells me the brakes are functioning in some fashion. Does it tell me if all the brakes are working at this time? No, but they tell me that some of them are working. If I was on gravel, what I would do is I would hold that brake on and move the truck forward and see which one of the tires is grabbing and dragging across the gravel. If you have all the brakes working, that tells you that part of the electrical system is working. There is also a breakaway switch that has the cable, which you also see on our trailer's maintenance and safety inspection uh, program. 
There's your breakaway switch. You can go ahead and hello, pull that switch out, jump in the truck, and see if the truck goes forward or if it stays still. That tells you that that system is working as well. I highly also recommend that you walk around and you check all the tire tread thicknesses. Look for dry rot on the tires because that's a big issue with a lot of the older trailers. And then the next thing you want to do is go around and check all your door functions. This trailer has some type of a unique front end, but you can open this door. This latch is not working correctly, so you know that you may need attention. You can check your ramp. This one has a uh, ramp in the front nose. You can check that. I recommend you go in and you check all your divider latches. Make sure those are all functioning right. You know, and if they're not working perfectly, that's something that, yes, you can use against the price of the trailer. But at least you know that these components are there and working. Check your interior lights. See if those are working. Another big thing that you need to do is you need to lift these mats up. And you need to inspect the floor. Because a lot of trailers, floors rot out. Um, even on aluminum trailers. Don't be afraid if there's manure in there. Get down there and dig in. And if you look on this trailer, you see a lot of corrosion along the walls. And there, I'd be concerned that that might actually be rotting through the outside. But this trailer is a double wall construction. But even though when you see heavy rot like that, that will make you be concerned about the actual wall studs in the trailer. Are they rotted out? When you're looking at an all-steel trailer, you can actually see the, the studs on the ceiling. These studs are actually inside this wall. And if you have really bad rot at the bottom of the wall like that, the stud could be rotted off at the bottom. And you're going to have problems as it goes down the line. Once you check the floor and you realize the floor is in decent condition, definitely check it at the back. This is a straight load, and you want to check at the very back to make sure that floor is in good condition because all the urine ends up at the very back of this trailer. This trailer has a rear ramp with two dust doors. Make sure these latches function properly and the doors swing all the way back. Another big thing a lot of people don't pay attention to is your ramp door. Check to make sure that door opens and see how heavy this ramp is. Like this one's getting kind of heavy, so that tells me the springs that help lift up this ramp are starting to get worn out. And a lot of manufacturers like this Jackson is no longer in business. So for me to get those components to repair that, if they're not a regular market type of purchase from a warehouse, they made it themselves, it will be very expensive to repair this ramp. So what you can always do is, if it is heavy, before you make the purchase, call a guy like me, your local trailer guy, that's what's beautiful about smartphones, take a picture, send them off to the guy and say, hey, is this going to be able to be fixed or can you get parts to repair this? Because that will make a decision if you want to buy this. There's nothing like buying a trailer that you can't lift up the ramp. And there again, come back to the back of this trailer, Lift the mats and look at that wood. See if it's rotted. What I always recommend customers to do is take your trusty hammer with you. And don't be afraid. I mean, horses are in there and banging on this stuff. Lift that mat up. Kind of hit this wood. This, this board here is actually pretty, pretty rotted. So I'd be a little bit concerned about this board. And if... This one won't be that hard because it doesn't have a tack room to replace. Some of these trailers with tack rooms, this board's all the way underneath the whole tack room wall, and you have to do a lot of work to replace it. Another place you want to check is back here, this framing, to make sure it's not rotted out. Because a lot of rear uh, straight loads, the horse's urine eats away these back parts of the frame, and it's basically no good. The next thing that you're going to do is get on your hands and knees. Wear some dirty clothes. Don't be afraid to investigate. If someone is, doesn't want you to take a hammer and hit their trailer underneath, there's a reason why. Well, I'm going to get down here and I'm going to take my trusty hammer and I'm going to start looking at these frame components and I'm going to start tapping 
And what I'm doing is I'm actually looking for weak spots in the frame. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up in the air for you so you can really see what I'm hitting so you get a good idea of what to do when you're at a person's house. Okay, we've kind of cheated a little bit. We're not laying on our belly anymore. What we've done is we put this up in our, the air on a rack so you can actually get a really good view of the bottom side of the trailer and what you do need to look for when you're underneath. One thing I want to point out to you is we talked about the ramp being a little bit heavy to open and close. And if you look here, this is actually a homemade spring assist system. This can be uh, repaired. They've actually used uh, leaf springs from trailers to make these spring assemblies. If you look, it's a little bit rusty and stuff, but it's something that can be adjusted on this trailer. What you're looking for is the framing. And if you look over here and you see this, this is really not a structural piece of the trailer. This was actually put in to run the wiring through, which you can see the wiring here, and it's rotted out. There's a way around this is by getting some wire looms and screwing it to the frame of the trailer. You don't really have to put this whole piece in. It's not really structural. What we're looking for is right up in here, structural. And this does throw a little bit of concern to me because this is a quarter inch thick angle iron frame. And if you look up here, it is kind of rusty. And I'm going to hit this with the hammer. And you start seeing the rust come out of this. And this is what you're looking for. And I'd be a little bit concerned, but not too right here because it looks kind of thick. But if we fan on down, this is actually where your axles are attached to the trailer as well. Now this is what we call a torsion tube suspension, and there's no leaf springs here holding the axles up. So there's a lot of torque on this frame from the way this axle is put in, and most every trailer out there are using the torsion tube suspension. There are leaf spring one out there in the older trailers, but most of them are all torsion tube suspension. And that's another thing you're going to look for is the thickness of the axle. And just take your hammer and your cap, and you don't have to beat the living heck out of it because then the owner will get a little upset. But I'm looking right here, and if you get a picture up in here, so this is the axle bracket, and I'm going to tap on this. And it's pretty solid, but you can see how it's really rusted up in there. I think it'll be all right for a while, but if this is something that you're going to purchase and think that it's going to hold up for seven or eight years, you're mistaken. It's not going to last that long. And then what I do is I continue looking down the side of the frame, and as I'm going by, I'm looking at the cross members to see if they look good. And I'm coming up, and now we get up to what we call the tongue of the trailer. And there again, this is something you really want to pay attention to. And if we look right here, that's actually a patch that was put in at the factory where they cut it and bent it. And it is not cracked, it's been welded in from the other side. And I'm looking at the frame, and I'm looking, and I'm taking my hammer, and I'm tapping, and I'm looking to see if I can find any holes or any place that the frame's rotted out. In reality, this frame is really not in bad shape. I'm looking all the way around. Now, Vantage, I am up in the air where you'll be on your ground. But when you're going to acquire a trailer, this is something that you really want to look for. I've actually had some customers who have bought trailers, and within two or three weeks, the axles did come out because they were rotted out here. And that, you know, where the axles tamped. You can tell there's rust up in here, but it still sounds pretty solid. And then, while you're under here, look at the boards. Because remember we were talking this one board looked a little bit rotted? And it's not as bad as I thought it is, but it does have a crack in it. But I really don't think that will be an issue. So this is something, when you're underneath, check the axle tubes, check the axles. Because you don't want, this is the heart of the trailer. And if this fails on you, you've bought a trailer that is no good. If you have any questions or comments or have any questions about a trailer, don't hesitate to give us a call at DLMR Trailers or email us.